Once upon a time, in a misty enchanted forest, there lived a colony of good elves. These elves had a major problem, though. Their prized mushroom garden was infested with pests, a giant centipede, a poison-spreading scorpion, a mischief-making spider, and a pesky flea. The good elves tried everything they could to rid the garden of these bugs, but nothing worked. One day, an elf named Oliver was hacking away at a poison mushroom in the garden. Suddenly, he saw an unusual stick gleaming in the dirt. Just as Oliver picked up the stick, a spider jumped out from behind a mushroom and rushed at him. When Oliver waved his hands wildly to try to scare the spider away, sparks flew from his stick and the spider disappeared. How did that happen? Oliver wondered out loud. Could this be? A magic wand? Soon Oliver had another chance to try the wand. When the scorpion scurried across a row of mushroom, poisoning every mushroom it touched, Oliver pointed the wand at the scorpion and shouted, BE GONE! Instantly, the scorpion disappeared and the poisoned mushrooms were transformed back into normal mushrooms. This is great! This is the tool we need to clean up our mushroom garden! With his newfound magic wand, Oliver hid behind a mushroom. Alright, you great big centipede, come out wherever you are. I'm ready for you now! What's up, everybody? This is Kevin here from Happy Beard Games, your source for classic gaming goodness. And today we're going to talk about Centipede. Centipede, man! This game is an arcade classic. And it's a lot of fun, even till this day. That game came out in... 1980. Yes, 1980. It's an Atari game, and it's actually a lot of fun and holds up really well to this day. Now today on Happy Beard Games Quick Play Arcade, we're going to look at five, yes, five different versions of the game Centipede, and to a lesser extent, its sequel, Millipede, which came out shortly afterward and is pretty similar. Now, many of these games are direct ports of the arcade version of Centipede. However, some of them are actually ports of the Atari 2600 home console version of Centipede, which actually holds up quite well. In the case of the Game Boy, we've got Arcade Classics 2, Centipede and Millipede. This game is actually one of the few that doesn't take a direct port. It kind of makes its own game around Centipede. Um, but it does hold up true to the Arcade Originals gameplay. Then we've got Arcade Classics on the Sega Genesis, which is called Arcade Classics Centipede Missile Command, also includes Pong. That's the title. We've also got Atari Anniversary Edition Redux for the PS1, the PlayStation. Then we'll take a look at Atari Anthology for the PlayStation 2, which is a really great collection and does a faithful port of every game that it has on this collection. And finally, we'll be looking at Atari Flashback 2. It's a plug-and-play console of the Atari 2600 that features authentic controller inputs and controller replicas, so it's really authentic in that way, and it gives you the feel of playing Centipede. However, this one is not the arcade Centipede, it's the 2600 home Centipede. What is Centipede? You are an elf. Yeah, that's right, an elf. Defending the mushroom garden from centipedes. But not only that, there's also a spider, a scorpion, and a flea. And they're coming to get ya! How do you defend it? With your magic wand, of course. This game is a shoot 'em up a shmup, if you will. Many of the shmups back in the day were space games. Galaga, Galaxian, Space Invaders all come to mind. But Centipede is not. It has a fantasy setting, although it does play closer to the other space game shoot 'em ups from back in the day. The graphics are far from realistic, but they do have a basic pixel art that represents well what the insects look like, and you can attribute that and recognize them as things in real life. So when you see a scorpion on the screen, you go, oh, that's a scorpion. You see the spider, and you base it on the movements of the spider in the game, it looks like a spider jumping around. And then you've got the centipede itself, which has the most iconic visuals of them all, because it really does look like a centipede moving around through the mushrooms. It's worth noting that the arcade cabinet itself has some great artwork on the sides and top panel, 
and to me is a memorable piece of video game art history. In the gameplay, you can shoot, you can move right or left, and up and down as well. The arcade version uses a trackball controller instead of a joystick. The game's goal is to defeat the centipede on each level, and take out any other enemies along the way. The centipede's movement is very iconic as well, you get a sense of it approaching you from the top and you're all the way down at the bottom as the centipede crawls between the mushroom paths. The game gets interesting from your very first shot at the centipede. When you hit the centipede, it splits into two centipedes at the very spot you hit it at. This is essential to the gameplay and carries over to the rest of the game. You now have to keep an eye on two or more centipedes going through the mushrooms on their own. Some of the other enemy types are the scorpion which moves horizontally across top portions of the screen. Shoot it from a distance for extra points. There is also a spider which tends to stay near the bottom of the screen and does a jumping movement. You can run underneath it mid-jump to shoot its underbelly. The spiders are one of the more frequent enemy types aside from the centipede itself. You can lose in this game just by getting touched by an enemy. You can run into an enemy or you can have an enemy run into you. Either way, if you get touched by an enemy, you lose a life. It becomes increasingly difficult to dodge enemies when they come on so fast towards the bottom of the screen, and the bottom of the screen fills up pretty quickly, and that's the only space that you have to move around in, so you're going to be dodging left and right, up and down. It's worth noting that on the game's centipede, you don't get a game over if the centipede reaches the bottom of the screen. Instead, the centipede continues to rise back up and slowly rebuild itself with more centipede parts as you continue to fight off the centipede. Unlike other shoot 'em up games, the enemies in this game don't use ranged attacks to shoot at you, instead they just kind of move towards you. This is especially true with the centipede because it's basically just running towards you the entire game. It's not shooting at you, it's not throwing bombs at you, it's not attacking you even, it's just coming toward you. And when it does come toward you and it gets to you, you lose a life. Once you successfully complete a level, the next will be even more difficult. In true arcade fashion, the game increases its difficulty with speed and more enemies. On the game's sequel, Millipede, you will have more enemies and of different and new insect types. I found the arcade version of the sequel, Millipede, more difficult than the original Centipede, but on the Game Boy version, Millipede was much easier than Centipede. Now let's take a look at some of each console's differences in Centipede games. Now that we've covered the basics of Centipede, let's check out some of the games. One of my favorites is this one here, Arcade Classics number 2, Centipede and Millipede for the Game Boy. It's a lot of fun and is one of my favorite ports of the game. Aside from the arcade original, this is my favorite. Yeah! With the game Centipede on the Game Boy, we're playing it today on the Super Nintendo using the Super Game Boy accessory. Now you can notice right off the bat that this is a Super Game Boy game pack, which means not only will it be playable on a Super Game Boy, Super Nintendo, it's actually got a bonus to it as well. It's got a custom border around the game screen, and the game screen itself has custom coloring. The borders actually change depending on which game you're playing at and which part of the game you're at. So when you're playing the Centipede game, it says Centipede on the top, and it looks like an arcade cabinet, which I found really cool. If you're playing Millipede, it'll actually change the arcade cabinet to the game Millipede. Now one of the things that I also noticed at the very start of this version of Centipede is it's got a soundtrack. Yes, Centipede has a soundtrack. It may or may not be what you expected, but to me it sounds pretty good. One of the reasons that I really like the Game Boy version is the difficulty. Now once again, the game's difficulty plays into speed and how many enemies there are on screen. Because if you think about it, those are the only ways that you can really lose is if things get too fast and hectic, or there's too many enemies coming at you at once, or a combination of the two. You can choose from four difficulty settings, Novice, Standard, Expert, and Advanced. I stuck with Novice for this one but uh, I, I could see myself going up higher and higher as I get better at the game. Which is a really good thing to have in this game because on the arcade version, you just have what, whatever you have at the start of the arcade. You don't really have too much to practice on, especially if you're at an actual arcade. Whereas on the Game Boy, it's like, it's your own home version. So you want to have those options so that way you get some practice. That way you're not just 
spending a few minutes on it and feel like you should have just paid a quarter for this game. It's a good way of getting your money's worth with the game when you have the option to actually play for a longer amount of time, and this game really lets you play for quite a long time. It's also worth noting that on the same Game Boy Game Pack, there's the game Millipede, its sequel. The weird thing about Millipede is there is no difficulty selection from what I saw, and the game itself is a lot easier, even the novice on Centipede. Now, Centipede on Game Boy features that same iconic arcade gameplay that you remember and love from Centipede. However, it is a little bit slower paced, the graphics are a little bit different, but the gameplay, the enemies, the movements of the enemies, the movement of yourself, the movement of the centipede are all pretty much the same from what I could tell. It just feels slower, and the graphics are a little different, and there's sound effects. The sound effects to me are a welcomed addition. Centipede on the Game Boy features a leaderboard system where you can see your score after you get a game over and see how it ranks up to you or whoever else may be playing. To narrow it down for you, Centipede on the Game Boy is my favorite choice because of the sound, the music, the slower gameplay, the difficulty selection, and the greatness of having a portable Centipede game. Now let's look at the Sega Genesis port of Centipede on Sega Genesis's arcade classic Centipede Missile Command also includes Pong, a game which Sega once said, this game's got bugs. Centipede on the Sega Genesis is a little different than the others because it features two different graphical modes and a new gameplay mode. The first of those graphical modes is just an arcade version. It's similar to the arcade, but not quite. But the graphics are closer to the arcade, but they're still not exactly the same as the arcade, so it's a little different here. In addition, you've got different sound effects. Now those sound effects carry over to the next graphical mode, which is called Sega Mode. And pretty much it's the same thing, except for you can see the grass detail in the background. You can see different colors. Um, that's really about it. It's not that much of an improvement. It's not like they took Arcade Centipede and then they took like a Sonic the Hedgehog graphic game. They didn't really do that. They didn't really go very far on this one. And they kind of kept it at a minimum graphically. So you've got uh, more of a darker toned basic toned arcade version and you've got the more colorful uh, Sega version with the grass in the background. Centipede on the Genesis plays pretty much the same as the Centipede that you know and love so that gameplay carries over as well. So the gameplay is all there. Additionally in the Sega version there is one extra mode which I find really cool but I wasn't really able to try it out to its full extent and that is a two-player co-op mode. Yes you can play two-player co-op on Centipede Basically, it's just like normal Centipede, but you've got you and your buddy shooting at the same time, on the same field, same board, against the Centipede. That sounds like a lot of fun. I got to try it out briefly, because you can play it with one controller, but I wasn't able to play it to the fullest extent. But it does seem like a fun thing, so if you're looking for a multiplayer version of Centipede, here you go. And that's about it for the Sega Genesis version of Centipede. Now it's time for some Redux with Atari Anniversary Edition Redux for the PlayStation 1. We're going to check out this game's port and how it stacks up to the rest of the ports. On Atari Anniversary Edition Redux for the PlayStation 1, you have a few unique options. Now this game features the exact same gameplay as the arcade classic Centipede, so if you played it in the arcade and you want to expect the same experience at home, this is what you got. It's pretty much the same. I haven't been able to find a definite difference between this one on the PlayStation 1, the arcade original, and the arcade game on the PlayStation 2. However, the graphics do appear to be a little bit more blurry on this system, probably because I'm not using S-Video on my PlayStation. Currently, my S-Video cable is broken. Considering what the graphics are and what we're looking at, it's not that big of a deal. The arcade cabinet artwork on the sides of the gameplay is different than the Game Boy. It's pretty basic, just green boxes on the side. There's also some cool additions to the game that are mostly exclusive to this collection. One of those is an art gallery showcasing not only the artwork for the game, the game packs, the game manuals, but also some promotional items from Atari. So that's about it for the PlayStation 1 Atari Anniversary Edition Redux. Overall, it's a good port of the arcade version, 
And that's pretty much all you're going to get. Now let's check out PlayStation 2's Atari Anthology, which includes many Atari classics, but also includes both the arcade and the home version of Centipede, as well as Millipede. Now we're looking at Atari Anthology for the PlayStation 2, which was released in 2004. This game features a really cool menu, which is like a space menu, and you've got constellations. You click on the constellation, it'll bring you into uh, a close-up of that, and each little dot on the constellation, each star, will be a different game in that category. And the constellations are representing each category, because there's action games, adventure games, arcade games. They have the arcade originals, and they have arcade at home. So those are the two categories we're going to be looking at. The arcade at home is Centipede on the 2600. Arcade original is Centipede on the arcade. If you go to the arcade section and you click on Centipede, you've got what looks like pretty much the same as the Centipede on the PlayStation 1 collection. There is a few differences here though. One of them, most noticeably, is the HUD. You have a bar on the top as well. Instead of just bars on the sides, you have a bar on the top. Not much of a difference, I know. But the gameplay is still, once again, the same arcade gameplay that you come to expect from Centipede. So, once again, you've got another really great port of Centipede. You can play this on the PlayStation 2, and it'll give you the same experience as what you may have had on the PlayStation 1. Both of those games, once again, I could not find any difference between those and the arcade originals. For the extra features and bonus modes of Centipede, there's actually quite a lot here. Many of them I haven't unlocked yet and haven't had the opportunity to go and unlock, so I don't know exactly what all is there. Some of the things that I did get to look at were more promotional artwork, images of the game, images of the manual, and they seem to be a little bit higher resolution than they were on the PlayStation 1. So that's always a bonus. But wait, there's more. There's also access to the original arcade version of Millipede, so you can play Millipede on here as well. And you can see that that game is a little bit different than Centipede, but as it's its own sequel, you can see that there's some improvements to it, if you want to call it that. In addition, you can also play Centipede on the Atari 2600 version, which is a little bit different. You can tell the graphics are not all quite there. The mushrooms are rectangles. The 2600 version of Centipede is by no means a slow game, but it is a little bit slower than the arcade version. Along with graphics and speed, the other difference between Centipede on the 2600 versus the arcade is the sound. The sound is... well, it wasn't that much sound to begin with, but there's less of it here. So that's it for Atari Anthology. To me, this is the best port if you want the arcade authenticity. And finally, let's move on to the Atari 2600 Flashback 2 Home Console. This is a plug-and-play system once again and features only the Home Console 2600 port of Centipede. Playing Centipede on the Atari Flashback 2 is more of a retro nostalgia throwback feel rather than an improvement or an enhancement to the gameplay. This game does not feature any enhancements at all. There's no menu, there's no HUD, there's no arcade border, there's no manuals that you can look at, no bonus features, but you do get the authenticity of playing with an actual Atari controller. You can use the original controllers, you can use the replica controllers that are pretty much identical that it comes with. You can use a Sega Genesis controller, you can use an arcade stick. You can also feel reassured that the system you're on is authentic, it's Atari branded, but not only that, if you have experience with soldering, working on video game components, working on electrical components, and wires, you can actually create a port for it to play authentic, original Atari 2600 game cards. Apparently it's not that hard to do either. There's a guide to it online, and it's possible to play actual game cards on this plug-and-play system. It's the only flashback system that allows you to do that. So with that in mind, you know that you're playing on some authentic hardware here. And that's probably the best thing going for it on the Flashback 2. Just an authentic retro gaming experience. It may not be the exact same as the original Atari, but it's probably the next best thing if you're looking for the 2600 version. Of course, there's been many other Centipede video games. Some remakes, some new games entirely, based on Centipede. Some of these games include one for the Dreamcast and the PlayStation 1 that looks like a 3D remake, and then there's a newer one for the Wii called Centipede Infestation. Maybe one day we'll follow up on this with Centipede Infestation on Wii for a Wii Wednesday. Alright guys, that was it for today's Quick Play Arcade here on Happy Beard Games. We checked out the games Centipede for various consoles, 
and it was a lot of fun. I mean, this game is a game from 1980 that holds up really well as an arcade classic. And we checked that out on various systems, so we got a good feel of exactly why that is. And we got to look at some of the different aspects of this game. If you like this video in any way, shape, or form, subscribe today for more classic gaming goodness. If you want to support my channel, please leave a like on this video. It helps a lot. If you want to leave a comment, please go ahead. And if you want to support me even further, you can check me out on Vidme where I post some exclusive videos, as well as this video. And you can also check me out on Twitter. So the next time you're in the arcade, be sure to check out the classic Centipede. That's it for today's video. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned to Hybrid Games. Bye!